Good evening, everyone. Good evening, love and faith family. Uh, thank you for, jo for joining in tonight for our Fresh Word Bible study. Listen, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what we face, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we experience, we can always rejoice in the God of our salvation. And so I am excited today uh, about what God is going to speak to us through his word. Um, as you know, last week we started uh, this 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 uh, series on thankfulness. Um, and so we are in the month of November, the month where we celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, and so I thought it, it would be fitting for us to look at what the scripture says about us being a thankful people uh, to ensure that that our hearts and our minds and our mouths are in the right position uh, to thank God for all that he has done for us. And so we are going to continue in that vein on tonight. Uh, so if you would go ahead and like and share, uh, invite as many people as you would like. Um, go ahead and start a start a watch party um, and get everyone involved in this study on tonight. Um, and also before we jump into the study, uh, I want to wish our own pastor, Bishop-elect Lamar Simmons, a happy birthday. Uh, he is celebrating his birthday yesterday. Or, he is celebrating his birthday today, um, and so we we did our um, um, drive-through parade uh, yesterday in uh, celebration of him. But uh, I want to say to him, happy birthday, uh, and we love you and we appreciate you and all that you continue to do uh, for the life of Love and Faith Community Church. So blessings to you as you celebrate on this day. So uh, as we prepare to jump into the Word of the Lord on tonight. Um, I'm going to ask that you would turn your Bibles to James chapter thir or James chapter three, uh, James chapter three, because uh, that's going to be kind of where we're where we're going to launch off tonight. Um, and so uh, as you turn there, we're going to go ahead and pray and then we'll jump right into tonight's lesson. Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. And Lord, we choose. We uh, make up our minds and our hearts today that we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word. Father, we thank you that um, that the God that you're still speaking, uh, Lord, that 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 we recognize that there was a point in time, God, where the heavens were quiet. But Father, we thank you that even in the midst of all that we're experiencing in this world, that you're still speaking by your spirit. And so, Father, we pray that uh, as we open up our hearts and as we open up our minds to receive from you on tonight, that you would speak and that we would hear clearly. Father, give us ears to hear, give us hearts to receive, and give us minds and wills to do what the Spirit instructs on tonight. And so, Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So last week, um, we kind of set the stage for uh, talking about thankfulness. Uh, and there were three things that we kind of looked at last week. The first thing was having a right relationship with Jesus. If we're going to be a thankful people, uh, it starts with having the right relationship with Jesus Christ. In other words, we've got to be in covenant with him. Um, and so uh, that's where it all starts. The second thing we looked at is renewing our mind in the word of God. We looked at uh, Romans chapter 12, verses one and two, uh, and, and, and what Paul instructs there about renewing our minds uh, and how um, it is oftentimes bigger than what we just might experience in this life, but it's really something that's going on on the inside of us, that there is a battle uh, going on on the inside of us and how we've got to address those things. Um, and, and, and really it goes beyond the mind and it goes into our hearts. And so we want to make sure that, that as we renew our mind uh, in the word of God, that it gets deep down into our hearts and transforms our hearts as well. And then the last thing that we looked at uh, was walking in the spirit, because when we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. One of the interesting things about um, uh, scripture is that when we read it in, in English, uh, there's so much that we miss. And so one of the things that I think is 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 interesting about this uh, passage, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, is that what uh, Paul says is written in two different uh, voices. He says, walk in the spirit, which is written in the active voice. And then he says, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, which is written in the passive voice. And so what he's saying is, as you walk in the spirit, as you actively follow after the heart, the mind, and the will of God, that you won't have room for anything else. 
And so by default, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Um, and so Paul here uh, really emphasizes how important it is for us to totally surrender ourselves to the heart, the mind, and the will of God uh, to, to, to help keep us from doing the things that are not going to be pleasing to the Father. And so that's kind of what we looked at last week uh, to kind of to kind of set the stage for us being thankful. We've got to have a relationship with Jesus. We've got to renew our minds and our hearts in the word of God. And then we've got to walk in the spirit. Uh, and as we do that, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, but we will fulfill the will of the father for our lives. Um, and so this week we're going to jump into uh, looking at James chapter three. Um, and I'm not going to read it in its entirety. Uh, I'm going to start at verse eight and go through verse 12, because uh, those are kind of the, the uh, verses that we're going to hit on tonight. Uh, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the in the uh, image of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my uh, brothers, bear olives or a grapevine bear frigs, figs? Thus, no spring yields both salt and fresh water. So um, last week, we again kind of kind of looked at um if we're going to be thankful people, uh, that we have to renew our minds. We have to renew our minds. Um, and what and what Paul says here is is that uh, it's not just um, putting things into our mind, but that that we are literally transformed. Uh, and that word transform, we kind of looked at it last week, is the word that we get our word um, um, English word metamorphosis from. And so. Uh, what it what it what it talks about is uh, um, moving from this state of what you were into something totally different, never returning to what you were. In other words, um, look at the caterpillar. The caterpillar starts off as that a caterpillar, and then it transforms or it metamorphoses into a butterfly, and that butterfly will never go back to being a, a caterpillar again. An acorn has everything it needs to become an oak tree. But once that acorn takes root, once that acorn begins to grow, it will never go back into being an acorn. It will only move forward in becoming a great and mighty oak tree. Um, and so uh, if we're going to be thankful people, then, then we have to metamorphosize. Um, that, 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 that there has to be some, some, some outward evidence showing in what has taken place on the inside of us. Um, John Brevere in his book, Killing Kryptonite says this, repentance means changing our mind so deeply that it changes our personality from the core of our being. When we turn to Christ, he makes us brand new, giving us the grace to live like him. Let me read that again. Repentance means changing our mind so deeply that it changes our personality from the core of our being. When we turn to Christ, he makes us brand new, giving us the grace to live like him. So look at verse uh, 12 in James chapter three. James asks this question, can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives? Or can a grapevine bear figs? Thus, no spring yields both salt and fresh water. So James is making this very practical. He's breaking it down for us very plain. Um, and he's doing it in, in, a, in, a, in a way where, where the people he was speaking to would have understood it because they worked in agriculture. But it's also very plain for us because we understand a little bit about how agriculture works. We know that if you go to an apple tree, you're not going to find an orange. Although I did see something very interesting today. Um, there was a lady in uh, Panama City who found a watermelon growing on a tree. 
don't ask me how that works. I don't want that watermelon. I hope you don't want it either. Um, but I thought that was something very interesting. But generally, you don't see this type of stuff happening. Um, and so uh, as we look in, in you know, nature itself, it bears out what things should actually look at for us. So James says, can a fig bear olives? Can a, can, can a, can a grapevine bear figs? The obvious answer to this is no. And so he says, so just like that can't happen, nor can a spring have fresh water and salt water coming out of it at the same time. And as a result of that, our mouths should not have blessings and cursings coming out. We should only have blessings come out, coming out of our mouth if we are going to be the children of God, if we're going to be thankful people. So let's look at three things, uh, three things that our tongue has the power to do, not only for us, but for the lives of those that we encounter. The first thing is the tongue has the power to direct. Our tongue has the power to direct. Look at what James said in verses three and four. He says, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships for an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder. Therefore, the pilot wants. Therefore, the uh, pilot wants it to go. And so, uh, James says here uh, that 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 just like we put bits in the mouth of a horse, and just like a a a, a ship is controlled by a very small rudder, uh, that the tongue inside our mouth uh, is what. Uh, really dictates uh, how we respond. Uh, and so um, our tongue directs us either in the right path or our tongue is going to direct us in the wrong path. What we say can literally change the course of not only our lives, but the lives of those that we speak into. It can cause people to either go into a life of blessings or it can cause them to go into a life of destruction. And it can do the same thing for our lives. On the other hand, if we say the right words, it can lead someone away from sin and turn them to, to salvation. And so we have the power of life and death in our tongue. We can help to assist someone in being totally destroyed, totally broken down, totally discouraged, um, totally at 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 loss of hope, or we can lead someone to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And so our tongue has the power or the ability to direct. Then the second thing that our tongue has the power to do is destroy. Our tongue has the power to destroy. Look at verse uh, verses five through eight. He says, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is, is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless, evil, full of deadly poison. So in, in uh, verses five through eight, James emphasizes the fact that the tongue is a small member of the body, uh, but it can also cause great destruction. That while it is still small, it, 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 it uh, packs a major punch. A teeny spark can set a whole fire forest on fire. Think about the, the you know, fires that we see generally every year in California. It's usually someone left a campfire burning. It's usually someone took a cigarette butt and left it on the ground. It's usually something very small, but it, but it causes so much damage. It causes thousands and thousands of acres of uh, forest and homes and animals and lives to be destroyed. And so uh, our tongues are the same way. An evil tongue can spread like poison. Uh, but at the same time, our tongues can also be very medicinal. 
Um, in other words, our tongues can heal and also uh, hurt. And so again, it's a matter of how we choose to use our tongues. Our tongues can bring healing or our tongues can bring hurt and harm. Then the last thing uh, that our tongues have the power to do, our tongues have the power to delight. Our tongues have the power to delight. Look at what James says in verses nine through 12. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praises and cursings. My, my brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water come from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So here James gives the um, illustration of a, a fountain or a spring bringing forth water. And he says that this that this uh, spring cannot bring forth salt water and fresh water out of the same mouth. And so just like a spring cannot bring forth fresh water and salt water out of the same mouth or out of the same source, the tongue cannot speak blessings and cursings at the same time. A tree cannot bear two kinds of fruit. Jesus talked about it in uh, Matthew 7. He says, you will know them by the fruit that they bear. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. So here's the question. Here's the question. What are you allowing to come out of your mouth? Because what you allow to come out of your mouth is a clear indication of what's really in your heart. So the question that 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 we all have to ask ourselves and we should ask ourselves this daily is what is really in our hearts? Um, I don't want to focus too much on on what may be in your heart, um, but I want to look at at where our hearts should be on what should be in our hearts and what should be coming out of our mouths and what should be coming out of our house, hearts and what should be coming out of our mouths is thankfulness. So this is November. This is the month of Thanksgiving. This is the time of year that if at no other time in the 365 days on the calendar that people, at least in America, because we're the only ones that that um, celebrate Thanksgiving. But if, if, if at no other time, we should be a thankful people. Uh, we should be uh, grateful um, for for life and for health and for strength. Um, just because this this you know season um, causes us to think and to meditate on that, um, we have a full holiday uh, that is that is dedicated to that, uh, to to being thankful to God for His manifold blessings upon us. But the truth of the matter is uh, that we, as followers of Christ, have much more to be thankful for outside of one month, outside of two days. Uh, every day should be a day of thanksgiving. Every day should be a day that we celebrate uh, what God has done for us. Um, every day that we open up our eyes is an opportunity for us to express to God just how thankful we are for his blessings and for allowing us to live a little while longer. So um, let's kind of look at the word thanksgiving or, or uh, thankfulness. To us, the word thanksgiving uh, or the word uh, thank you uh, or thanks um, is an expression of, of gratitude. Um, we are taught to use this word or this, this, this phrase, thank you, thanks, um, from, 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 from really the very beginning. Once, once a child begins to uh, speak, that child is taught to say please and thank you. Uh, and so as we grow, as we mature, that word uh, often becomes second nature to us. Uh, we don't really have to have to think about it. Uh, and if the truth be told, many times we say thank you or thanks uh, out of out of obligation uh, or to oblige or to appease someone else. Uh, and, and so it's not something that we, you know, genuinely uh uh, say or mean, and it's not that we that we say it with 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 any um, 
uh, sarcasm, with any disrespect, but it just rolls off the tongue. It's nothing that we really give much, much thought to. Um, we do it all the time and we do it without thinking about it. Why? Because it, it is the, it's the, it's the nice and the polite thing to do. But thank you. Thanks. Thanksgiving. Uh, they are more than just words. Uh, it's not something that we should just say in passing. It's not something that, that we should just say to try to appease other people. Uh, it's actually something that we are commanded to do in the word of God. Paul says this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. And this is one of my favorite verses. This is what Paul says. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So, it is a commandment in the word of God that we are to be a thankful people. He says, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God. Uh, this is the um, um, unquestionable, authoritative will and purpose of God, that we be a thankful people in Christ Jesus. And so we are commanded to give thanks. Uh, and not just for the things that we want, not just for the things that we need, um, not just for the things that that you know make us happy, that make us feel good. But Paul says here that we are to give thanks for everything. That means the good, the bad, and the ugly. We give thanks for everything. Why? Because Paul said this in Romans 8 and 28. He says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of them who love him and are called according to his purpose. So you know what? Even if it doesn't feel good, even if it doesn't look good, even if it's something that we don't like or appreciate, God is still going to cause it to work together for our good. And because we know God's working it out for our good, we can still be thankful knowing that God is going to bring us out. We can still be thankful knowing that God is going to use it to execute his purpose in our lives. Uh, and so this is really enough uh, for us to get happy about in and of itself, because if we look at, 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 at uh, Romans chapter eight and verse 28 in its context, this is what Paul is really saying. Let's look at, 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 at verse 18, Romans eight and verse 18. And this is what Paul says, Romans 8 and 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. So the first thing uh, that, that should cause us to be thankful is that regardless of what we're going through right now, it does not compare to the glory that's going to be revealed. It does not compare to what God has in store for us in the days and weeks and months and years to come. But then look at the next thing he says, verse uh, 21, Romans 8 and verse 21. He says that the um, creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. So the second thing that God is bringing to us is liberty or freedom from bondage. So not only do we have um, hope and great expectation of, the, of great things to come, but God is now currently actively bringing us out of bondage into a place of liberty. And then verse uh, 26, 8 and 26, in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do, know, we do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. So if knowing that we have a great future in store for us is not enough, and if knowing that we have been liberated from our chains and our fetters of, of bondage is not enough, even if we find ourselves still losing hope in the midst of what we're going through, the Bible says that God, uh, through his Holy Spirit, is going to intercede on our behalf. In other words, we've got somebody who was constantly praying for us to the Father. And so that's a reason to be thankful. 
And then the last thing he says in verse 27, he says, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the, sp the spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with the will of God. So the um, uh, spirit of God is going to help us endure. And then the spirit of God is going to intercede on our behalf. So why can we give thanks always, regardless of what we're going through in our lives? We can do it because nothing that we're going through currently compares to what God has in store for us in the future. That God is moving us from a place of bondage to a place of freedom and liberty. That God, through his Holy Spirit, is going to help us endure everything that we go through in this life. And the Spirit of God is going to intercede on our behalf to help us to get through what it is that we're going through in this life. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to be thankful because God is already working all things out for the good of them who love him and are called according to his purpose. We've got good reason to rejoice. We've got good reason to be happy. We've got good reason to be thankful because God is fighting on our behalf. God is working things out in our favor. God is turning things around for our good. Listen, somebody ought to shout hallelujah to the Lamb of God because God is working things out for our good. And we have a reason to shout. We have a reason to praise him. We have a reason to exalt and to magnify his name. This is the love of God. He's already set it up. He's already orchestrated it for us to worship him, for us to be thankful uh, in him and to have no reason to doubt, to have no reason to fear, to have no reason to be depressed or to be anxious. He's already orchestrated it. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. So let's let's kind of kind of look at this through through the lens of you know COVID. We've been going through COVID for the last few months. Um, let's kind of look at what at what Paul said through through that lens. All right. So COVID came, and you lost your job, or maybe one of your loved ones, a friend, a family member, got sick. What did Paul say? Not only can you get a new job, but that new job that's coming is going to be better than the job that you had before. Why? Because greater is ahead of us. That's what he said in verse 21, that 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 what is coming is better than what was. Right. So then even if you lost a loved one. Even if that loved one was sick, again, what's coming is still better. Why? Because Paul says, for to live is Christ, but to die is great gain. So some people have been suffering through um, through through COVID. Some people have been sick. Some people have lost their jobs. Uh, some people have, have lost their homes and their cars. Uh, it has been really difficult for a lot of people. But even in this season, there are a lot of people who are still prospering. There are a lot of people who are literally living their best life right now today, even in the midst. New businesses are opening up every day. People are starting new jobs. People are getting promotions. Even in the midst of COVID-19, people are still prospering. And so we don't have to be bound in Jesus Christ. We have liberty. Even in the midst of, we don't have to be a people bound in fetters and chains. We have liberty through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then while we may feel like we're being held down, while we may feel like we're being held back, while we may feel like we're we're um, uh, missing out on um, opportunities that the that the you know promises that God made us uh, may be on hold or may may have gotten canceled altogether. Uh, may, while we may even be ready to go back to a to a sense of normalcy, um, it is the Spirit of God that allows us to keep moving. It's the Spirit of God that 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 gives us the strength to endure even in the midst of. Listen, we've been going through this thing for what, eight months now? And some people are tired. I'm tired. I'm ready to go back uh, to a sense of normalcy, but I don't give up. I don't lose hope. I don't drop the ball because Christ uh, is, 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 is not only praying for me, but he's giving me the strength through his Holy Spirit to endure and to keep moving. And so when, when others throw in the towel, when others give up, we keep moving because the spirit of God helps us to endure. And then through it all, the spirit is making intercession for us. He is appealing to the father 
to give us strength and the spirit to comfort us and to remind us of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So again, looking at it through the lens of, of, of COVID and what we have been experiencing for the last eight months, we still have a reason to be thankful because God is still bringing us through it. He's still giving us strength to come out and he's causing his people to prosper even in this season. And so we do have so much to be thankful for. Uh, thankfulness should not only be in our hearts, but thankfulness should be in our tongues. Why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so what I want you to do is this. What I want you to do is this. It's real simple. I want you to take some time this week to meditate on Romans chapter eight, because usually we run straight to Romans eight and 28. Uh, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. But if we look at, 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 at the verses surrounding that, if we back up just a few verses and, and um, take some time to uh, look at why Paul could make that declaration, it'll move us to a place of being a much more thankful people. Uh, it'll help to, to uh, bring perspective to why Paul can say, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Um, it can bring help, help, help to bring context uh, to why Paul can say in uh, Philippians, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. And so spend some time this week uh, meditating on Romans chapter eight. Uh, and, and I can assure you that as you do that, uh, that you will you will move from a from whatever place you are in right now to a place of being more grateful to a place of being more thankful, to a place of being more appreciative of the grace and the mercy and the love of God that he demonstrates towards us every single day. And then as you meditate uh, on Romans chapter eight, I want you to uh, ask yourself three questions. I want you to ask yourself three questions. Number one, can blessings and cursings both come out of my mouth? Why or why not? Ask yourself, can blessings and cursings both come out of my mouth? Why or why not? Then number two, why should I give thanks in every situation? And I give you a hint. You can, you can filter that um, through 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5 and verse 18. And you can filter that through Romans chapter eight. And then the third thing I want you to do, or the third question is uh, answer this question. What do I have to be thankful for? What do I have to be thankful for? And then I want you to name three things, just three, three things that you can be thankful for and I want you to thank God for them every day for the next week. So number one, can blessings and cursings both come out of the same mouth? Number two, why should I give thanks in every situation? And number three, what do I have to be thankful for? And list three things and then thank God for those three things every day for the next week. And so as we uh, go through this next week and, and, and as we quickly approach Thanksgiving Day, um, I want us to be strengthened in our faith, uh, knowing that, that God has already orchestrated our entire lives, uh, that, that even in the midst of the worst situation that you could think of or imagine, God is still going to use it for his glory and for our good. He's still going to cause it to work together for the good of them that love him and are called according to the purpose, uh, called according to his purpose. And so as a result, uh, we can uh, cheerfully obey Paul's command in 1 Thessalonians to give thanks in everything, to give thanks in every situation 
regardless of what it is, regardless of what it looks like. Uh, and we can do it because of what Paul said in Romans 8 and 21, that better is coming. That what is before us is better than what has been behind us and even what we're experiencing right now. That God has great things in store for each and every one of us. So we can rejoice in that today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for the power of your word. God, we thank you that um, that it that it that it is a a timeless treasure. Um, that even two thousand years uh, after the death of Jesus Christ, that your word still speaks from the heavens. That it is living. That it is powerful. That it is sharper than any two-edged sword. And Father, we thank you uh, that that you are all knowing. Uh, God, that you've already ordered our steps, that you've already directed our paths, Father, that, that nothing that we experience in this life catches you off guard. And Father, we thank you uh, that, God, as you've already orchestrated our lives, that, God, you've given us uh, nuggets in your word to, to help strengthen us and to help encourage us and to help us to, to uh, keep our focus uh, centered on you. And so, Lord, uh, even in this moment, Father, we... we um, we declare, God, that we're going to look to the hills from where our help comes from, knowing that all of our help comes from you. Father, help us to keep our eyes stayed on you. Father, help us uh, not to be like Peter, looking away and 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 getting caught up in the things that are going on around us. But Father, help us uh, to keep our eyes fixed and stayed on you. Father, even as um, um, Overseer Gathers taught, taught us yesterday, uh, that 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 Peter was literally within arm's reach of his blessings. Father, help us not to give out, uh, not to give in, not to fall by the wayside when we are just steps and days away from uh, entering into this 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 glorious next season that you have for us. Uh, from uh, stepping into into better, stepping into greater. Help us not to 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 faint in our well doing uh, knowing that we shall reap if we faint not and so father we thank you for the holy spirit that is going to help us to do all that you've called us to do in your word uh, god that you would be glorified father that we would be made uh, stronger and better as a result of it father help us to let our light shine before men that they would see our good works and that they will glorify you in heaven uh, father we pray that that, that even as we live this life, God, that those who do not know you as Savior and Lord, that they would see our lives and that they would ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Because they see the hope and the joy and the peace that exudes uh, from the heart and the mouths of your people. And so, Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, so, listen, we, we have so much to be thankful for. Um, not not just during the month of November, but we have something something to be thankful for every single day that God opens up our eyes and that God gives breath uh, to our lungs. I heard something years ago. Um, I I don't know who um, coined the phrase, um, but but it says, "As long as there's breath in your body, there's hope." And as long as we've got hope, we've got something to be thankful for. So as we um, close out tonight, as we prepare to uh, transition out tonight, uh, we want to have an, an opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God, um, to uh, show God our gratitude for his goodness and his grace and his mercy toward us. Uh, we don't give grudgingly. We don't give out of necessity, but God loves a cheerful giver. Um, and so we give um, out of obedience to the word of God, and we give knowing uh, that God is going to bless us for our faithfulness towards him. And so we're asking that those of you all uh, who are tithing today, that you would be faithful in your tithe. Uh, those of, of you all who are giving on today, that you would find yourself in one of our four giving categories, uh, $100, $50, $25, or $5, a um, high five. Um, and then also do not forget, uh, as we're in the month of um, Thanksgiving, that uh, we are wrapping up our 
uh, Thanksgiving drive efforts. Um, and so we're asking that all members would join us in giving a $20 seed um, so that we can bless those families in need from Hartsfield Elementary uh, and from Elder Care Services. Uh, we're looking to, to, to actually wrap that up this week um, so that we can go ahead and purchase those gift cards for those families and get them into their hands so that they can do uh, what they need to do to prepare for Thanksgiving. Um, so we thank you uh, already for those who have given uh, and for those who are going to give in that way on tonight. And so if you have your gifts, I'm going to do what I always do, ask you to put some hearts and some smiles uh, in the comments and hold up your gifts as we pray, because God loves a cheerful giver. Giver, Father, we thank you uh, for this opportunity to give. Father, we thank you that it is at your discretion that men are made great. And it is because of you that we have anything to give at all. And so, Father, we pray that you would bless us as you see fit, for you do all things well. And now I do not bless the money, but I bless the giver. And I declare and decree that blessed are you by God, our Father, creator of heaven and earth. And every giver shout shalom. Shalom. Every need is met. There is nothing missing, nothing broken in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we thank God uh, again tonight for all of you who have joined us. I pray um, that you have been uh, touched by the word of God, that it, that it will find good ground in your heart uh, and that you will meditate on it every day and every night. And so uh, as we prepare to go tonight, let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you again uh, for this time to study your word. Father, we thank you for what you've spoken to us. And God, we pray that your word will find good ground in our hearts. Father, help us to be encouraged uh, in those moments where, where we may want to fall, where we may want to give up. Uh, Father, remind us of your word. Um, Holy Spirit, draw uh, back what we've already placed uh, deep in the canyons of our heart, Father, that, that, that we would be encouraged and motivated uh, to uh, run on just a little while longer and to see what the end is going to be. Father, we thank you for the strength for the journey. Father, we thank you for continuing to bless us and to keep us. And until we meet again, we pray, God, that you would cover your people and to, that you would keep them in perfect peace as they keep their minds stayed upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. We love you with the love of the Lord. And we will see you on Sunday morning at 1030 a.m.